compassion does have a flaw. And that is, if you're an extra compassionate person, you can get caught up in everyone else's problems and even forget you have problems of your own altogether, right? You know what I'm talking about, people out there who are extra compassionate. You get so wrapped up in helping everyone else, everybody's got a problem, and you, you're going to be there for them. You've got friends, you have family, people, and you're going to help them out, do all this stuff, and all of a sudden you come back home and your life shit. How'd that happen? Well, that's a simple problem of not helping yourself. Because really, if you want to help everyone else, you have to help yourself. Let's tackle this from a really practical point before we get into the more philosophical issues here. The really practical angle is you're not going to do anyone any favors if you're in the dumpster. If your life is gone completely down the toilet and you're absolutely miserable, you're not much good for anyone else. You want to help out a friend with some money? You don't have a job. You want to help out some friends with some time? Well, you're probably malnourished, you know, if you're completely down the dumps. You're not good for anyone. You're not good to anyone. And that includes yourself. Helping yourself is something that seems so obvious, right? Of course, you got to help yourself, but it becomes a form of escape. At least it has for me, and I'm sure this does apply to others, where rather than dealing with your own issues, you help other people out. You feel good, you're helping out other people, you're solving issues, right? And you feel accomplished, but you're not dealing with your problems. Your issues still remain, and you're really just using a positive influence as an escape. You're turning something positive into something negative. When you use being compassionate as a means of not dealing with your problems, or you let it get to the point where you just forget or just don't deal with your problems, you're not only hurting yourself, but you're hurting the people that have come to rely on you, perhaps. If you're helping out other people, especially if you're helping them out on a long-term basis, well then, you're not going to be able to keep helping them if you ignore yourself. It comes down to that really simple point, again, on this practical level. You're no good to anyone if you're ruined. Now, to that more philosophical issue here, which is that you're not going to be able to really, truly understand another person's issues until you've done them yourself, until you've done something similar to that. And pe when people need help, they have problems. That's, that's really obvious, again. But if you want to help them with their problems, you got to run through these problems, too. you got to run through things like them. You want to help someone out with a love issue, you're really going to be better at helping them if you know what it's like firsthand. If you've been rejected, if you've gone through a messy breakup, you can really help out someone else who's been through it. If you haven't, you can still help them out some by being there and everything, but you don't have that personal, first-hand experience that lets you know, okay, this is what you're going through. I can tell you, it's normal. That's normal. It feels crazy, but it isn't. You're helping out somebody with a money issue. It really helps if you've been down that road. If you can say, hey, don't do that. I did it. It messed me up. It seems like a good idea, but, well, man, it isn't. Your problems can be turned into a learning experience, but not just for you, but for everyone else. Like when I come to you, my listeners, with videos here, many of these have been spawned from events that happened in my own life, things that I've dealt with and thought about and discussed or debated, and that helps me understand these things in a more fundamental level so that I can convey them to you, as I do now. Had I not had these experiences, I would almost assuredly be fumbling for words and attempting to figure out what I'm trying to say instead of just coming at you with these more concise points because I know what I'm talking about on a subjective, personal level because I walk this road. I've been through these things. I have the experience that lets me tell you these things with more authority. Yes, I can tell you that good is right because I've walked that path. I've been down the paths of good and evil, right? And I've seen them. I know. And... Problems become learning experiences, to reiterate that, but not f just for you. It does work for you. You go through an issue, you learn how to deal with it better. And not only does it help you tell other people how to deal with these issues, but on a visceral, emotional, primal level, you now know what that issue's about, what that problem feels like. You know, it's one thing to say, I know you're depressed because a girl left you or something you really cared for. It's another to say, I know what you feel because I felt it too. I know what that feels like. It's a completely different level of empathy than just I can conceptually understand your pain versus I have felt it and can feel it with you because I know. I know. There's a world of difference there. 
And tackling your own issues is the key to bridging that gap. Because how else can you learn something that isn't scholastic except by experiencing it? The world's personal issues when it comes to humanity are not things that are taught in textbooks. They're not things you can learn just by reading on the internet or having discussions with people. They're things you experience for yourself firsthand. No guide is going to help you with a breakup, but someone who's broken up with someone can. Just something to think about.